I'm about to run some tests on a stereo hi-fi amp that we just built for AEE and I want to show some of the equipment and some of the techniques that we're using. I'm going to be taking the data with an HP 8903B audio analyzer and what I need to do is I take a signal that comes out of this feed it into the amplifier, that's this wire on the left hand side and then I adjusted the volume control so that I get a one volt RMS signal at the output. You can see on the oscilloscope that's what I'm starting with. Okay. And then over here is a software package that I'm going to use to do the graphing. I'm just uh, setting it up so that I can get this initial test signal. And it's going to sweep the uh, frequency response from 20 hertz to 100 kilohertz with 30 points per decade. What's happening now is that the uh, frequency is being swept and the number on the left hand side is the frequency that's being tested and on the right hand side the value of the voltage at the output of the amplifier. You can see on the oscilloscope the waveform's changing. What's happening is I set the controls to display a 1 kilohertz waveform and you can see now it's getting closer to that. It's about 108 hertz but as it approaches one kilohertz you'll see that picture on the oscilloscope uh, turn into a sine wave again of basically the same shape we were looking at just a moment ago while that's going out take a look at the, the graphing over here let me zoom in on this This is some software from Peter Millet. Actually free on the web. It works with this instrument. And you can see it's starting to sketch the uh, Bode plot of the gain versus frequency. What it's done is that the one kilohertz signal was set up um, to give a value of one volt out and it's really normalizing the gain at that frequency to be uh, zero dB. And you can see just about now it's passing through that one kilohertz point. Come back over to the instrument now. And you can see that the frequency that I'm at now is a little bit above a kilohertz and there's the waveform. And pretty much the gain's fairly constant, so as we're sweeping the frequency, the size of the output voltage is about the same. the scale on the oscilloscope not changing, you can see the waveform looks a little bit compressed. And I'll do this out to 100 kilohertz. Here's the rest of the Bode plot after it's finished the last uh, sweep frequency of 100 kilohertz. Let's zoom on this a little bit here and you can kind of see what the frequency response of the amplifier is. There's a little bit of a, uh, well, outside the audio band you can see there's a little bit of a peak in the gain, maybe around 50, 60 kilohertz or so. Um, that was a lot higher with the initial design and I wound up adding a capacitor and the feedback loop of the uh, uh, resistor that forms a non-inverting amplifier. Um, when I don't do that, that peak gets bigger and I get some oscillation at that frequency. Although you can't hear it, you're still consuming power and um, not good overall for performance. So, okay, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to move the probes around and repeat the same test for the um, right channel. This is the left channel. I've started the process of doing the right channel and it's swept through data past about 30-40 kilohertz and you can see this 
second line being formed pretty much tracking the first one. These are two separate channels, right and left. What's being graphed right now is the right channel. And you can see the right and left channel are fairly close in performance, just a few dB apart. This is called the Bode plot. It's a plot of the voltage gain versus frequency. The plot has been set so that the left channel was uh, having a gain of 0 dB at 1 kilohertz. The actual gain, if you measure at that frequency with the potentiometer uh, for the volume control turned to maximum, is around 21 or 22, which would be about 26 dB or so. so that's one of the first tests I do on the amplifier to make sure that um, everything's working properly. The next test I'm going to apply to this amplifier is to measure the total harmonic distortion plus noise. And again, I'm using this uh, HP 8903B audio analyzer. This is again one of its other functions that it can do. And I'm also going to be running again the same software, but another module. And what's being set up right now is a test signal so that at one kilohertz I have roughly one volt RMS. And that's about uh, 2.8 volts peak to peak and you can see it on the oscilloscope it looks fairly clean almost like a well virtually perfect sine wave but it does have some slight distortion to it and so now when I perform this test it's going to sweep the frequency from 20 Hertz to 100 kilohertz with 30 points per decade set this on the uh, software this is what's driving the, uh, the instrument through the HPIB bus Okay, you can see that the audio analyzer is around 900 hertz, just across the thousand, and the distortion is about 1.516 percent. So we get a pretty clean signal. At one kilohertz, you have a one volt RMS output. Again, 2.8 volts, roughly peak to peak. And it's going to continue to sweep this out to 100 kilohertz, and then we'll take a look at the graph. Of distortion versus frequency once it finishes it. So here's the graph of total harmonic distortion plus noise versus frequency. Let me zoom on this a little bit for you. And you can see that at about one kilohertz there's about a little more than one percent distortion. We've seen that also on the face of the instrument and then you can see as the frequency gets higher the distortion goes up to around 3% and as the frequency gets lower um, similar type results. Some of this uh, increase in distortion is partially due to the fact that the gain is rolling off at those frequencies so it may not be as distorted as it appears here but it's some inclination as to what's happening versus frequency. My next test of the amplifier is to use the HP3561A dynamic signal analyzer and what this is going to measure is the total harmonic distortion of this first case of the signal at 1 kilohertz. I'll also set it to an amplitude of 1 volt RMS. You can see on the oscilloscope in a pretty clean looking waveform we had measured about a little more than 1% harmonic distortion with the uh, uh, audio analyzer. And I hope you can let me zoom on this a little bit here. What's being displayed is the fundamental, which is that large peak, which is at 1 kilohertz. And then you can see two smaller peaks. They're actually at 2 kilohertz and 3 kilohertz. I don't know if you can read this on the screen, but it's a total harmonic distortion of minus. 36 dB. So if you divide that by 20 and make it the exponent of 10, multiply that by 100%, you get about 1.5% harmonic distortion. Also, has some software that'll grab this. It was also free software on the web. You can see that it's grabbing that screen of the uh, dynamic analyzer. I can print a copy for 
permanent record. And I'll be giving this to the students whose AMP I've been testing. So I get about the same results as I measured on the audio analyzer. What's different here is that it's measuring just the total harmonic distortion. So it's actually measuring the signal at one kilohertz and then measuring its components or its Fourier uh, equivalence uh, terms. In our previous test, we were actually measuring that plus any other noise in the circuit. This mostly is coming from the power supply. We're taking the wall outlet and rectifying it and then smoothing it out. And so there's a tendency to have some 120 hertz components. And so this is uh, just measuring the signal itself. So you get a measure of what's going on. But in both cases, they're about the same value. We'll see, though, for other tests that uh, sometimes that power supply distortion can be uh, as large as the distortion of the amplifier. I've now increased the inputs so that the output is um, driven to its absolute, absolute maximum peak to peak and you can see that I've overdriven it enough that the top and the bottom uh, look a little lumpier than they were before and you can also see this on the dynamic analyzer. Total harmonic distortion is around uh, minus 15.9 uh, dB. Divide that by 20, raise it to the power of 10 times 100%, so you get about 16% total harmonic distortion. You also notice here that the uh, harmonic content, the, the large peaks at 1 kilohertz, the next peak at 2 kilohertz, and 3 kilohertz, 4 kilohertz, that uh, one of the characteristics of tube amps is that when you overdrive them, you get um, really all harmonics. Here's second, third, fourth, fifth, and so on. With a transistor amplifier, it tends to clip real sharp. And you wind up getting, it looks more like a square wave, and that has odd harmonics, and so they'll sound a little bit um, tinnier, um, more of these uh, high-frequency harmonics uh, that give it that sound. Here again, let me take a look at capturing that on the uh, screen. And then again we can print this as a permanent record for uh, the owner of the amp. So recapping what we've done here, we're testing a stereo hi-fi amp. Uh, it's one of our AE projects for this semester using the HP 8903B audio analyzer which allowed us to measure voltage gain versus frequency, also to measure distortion versus frequency, using the oscilloscope to look at the actual waveforms, also used a dynamic analyzer to look at just harmonic distortion. All of this is on a HPIB bus, so we're able to control this with a laptop computer. And then here's some of the other test equipment function generator that generate the last test signals and some miscellaneous stuff here with an analog scope and a two high current power supplies.